Hi, I'm Natalie Walton, the CEO and co-founder of Expectful, and I'm so excited to be sitting down with Allison Sudol today to talk about becoming a mother, the trials, the hurdles, and the joys. You all know Allie from all of her creative portfolio, starring in the Fantastic Beast films, her career as a singer-songwriter, and doing even more work behind the camera across cinema and music. Thank you so much for joining me, Allie. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So today we're going to cover quite a bit and we're going to reflect on your personal experiences of becoming a mother. Like many women listening, you've had your own share of ups and downs. Trying to get pregnant, unfortunately, mm -hmm. included a miscarriage for you. It did, yes. I'm so sorry to hear that and 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 furthermore I'm so I'm so grateful that you're sharing um, your experience with expectful users because this is something that happens um, to to more people than you know than than we realize I think it, it happens to a lot mm. and, and people don't have a space to talk about it and yeah. so I, I would love to just ask you I mean losing a pregnancy can just be it can be shattering yeah. Can you speak to how you juggled the emotions that followed you? Yes. I mean, um, I, I should say that this is the first time I've spoken publicly about this. So I know, have no idea how it's going to um, come out. It might, <laughs> might be a couple of tears here and there. Um, um, basically, uh, the pregnancy was um, a lovely surprise, something that we weren't really uh, ready for, but wanted. Um, and m my one of my dearest friends who has also gone through uh, uh, two miscarriages, um, she said that pregnancy, you never really prepared for pregnancy, even if you've tried and tried and done everything. It, still seeing that, that, um, that positive test is just such a, it's such an e extraordinary life, life changer. It's, it's, it's like nothing else that I've ever experienced before where, um, you know, you, you're kind of going on one path and then you find out that you're pregnant and your life completely changes. And so I think it's this, it's this difficult concept for a lot of people to take in, especially if you haven't had a miscarriage, the, the, the grief is very, very deep and profound because it doesn't, you, ha you haven't met that person yet, but your whole world opens up to them in that moment. And, and, and finding out you're pregnant, I, I found that it was, it was, such an emotional journey it was so many more feelings than I was prepared for could process at the time and then um lo losing that pregnancy was just the most devastating raw um un unavoidable kind of grief that I've ever gone through where I've grieved for other things in the past but m my system sort of shut down and in um other losses in my life people that I've lost I would sort of just sort of stop up and cut it off and not be able to really deal with it and with this loss I just couldn't put myself back together um and it coincided with the the start of the first lockdown um and so there was this strange sort of space um where i i my life had been so so fast moving so so intense that there was so much travel and constant changing of environment and um and and, and different kinds of work and then and then everything was canceled. I was supposed to be on tour. Uh, I was supposed to be on stage that night, the night that I lost the baby. And instead I was at a friend's farm and we were just, we were just isolated. We didn't even have phone service and had to, my partner had to go up a hill to, to call. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was, it was just a, a, a very in, 
in, incredible time to go through such a loss, I'd say, um, in, in, in every way. I couldn't hide from it, but I also got to really feel it. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's really yeah. deep. And, and I, I appreciate your vulnerability in sharing that. I know that sharing this publicly is for the first time is really, um, it, it, it must be really difficult. So thank you. I, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, you're welcome. Woo, yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> if you need to take a break or anything, just... <laughs> It's, it's okay. It's, it's, I'd rather just, I guess, just feel it and be in it. It's, I'm all right. Oh, feeling the emotions. I mean, it's, it's, it's here. It's so. interesting. Cause it just, it doesn't matter how much, um, how much I've, I've processed it or worked through it. I've written an entire album about it. Um, but it just it just remains i guess it just remains a um a wound and and that's okay i don't really need it to i don't need it to heal i mean it it has healed but i don't need it to go away it's part of this the story it's good to feel it it's just oh. <laughs> it took me by surprise. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. Let's carry on. I imagine it's not something you, you talk about often. Or, I mean, is it or is or is it something that you continue to talk about? It's it's um it's it's a strange thing because I because I've I've written I've written an album that is is sort of the it's it's comes from this and and goes through all the different kind of stages of of grief and and strange joys in the midst of this this journey and and so i i ha i have to talk about it in a certain way because i'm now in the process of 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 bringing people into the fold creatively so then in some ways it, it becomes like a story you know when you package the story this is what happened this is this is the album and you know I don't I don't lean too heavily on the the painful side of it because well it's just it it sort of speaks for itself you know um but I don't tell I don't tell the story like I just told it um and um so it's funny you can you know how you can work you can work out a story, a way of living with something and a way of telling something, but then there's this just whole universe behind it of what happened that still feels very, very un, um, unplowed. Yeah. Yeah. What surprised you during this time? Did someone or anyone step in to support you um, that you didn't expect? And... I would also love to know, did you learn something about yourself in this process? Mm. Um, yeah, so many people stepped in. Um, because I have had, I've had friends go through this before who were open with me. Um, I remember witnessing their grief and not really understanding, but wanting to do whatever I could. But I saw that they had gone to a, a place that I I couldn't follow them, um, but I was so grateful for them t t telling me about what what they'd gone through, and um, they they had removed some of the taboo, I guess. So I I felt like I could speak about it, and also you know people would just ask how I was and I couldn't be like, yeah, you know, I've been okay. You know, I was just, I was so ripped open. So I spoke about it. And what was so surprising is how many people had gone through this that I, I didn't know about. Um, and by talking about it openly, friends that have kids that, you know, that I've known for so long say, oh yeah, you know, I went through that. It's, it's, it's awful. And, um, and I, I found that sometimes in these conversations, people that I care about who had maybe been able to grieve could sort of also 
get in touch with their grief because it's just it's just something you know you're not like it happens uh, so commonly so early on that it, it it's not something that people have necessarily like told their work about or um you know even talked about publicly so then you're going through this both intensely emotional and physical grief and yet you, you kind of like don't there's no sort of space for it because it's it's just it's it's hard to relate to um I'm this is my personal experience of having lost a a, a pregnancy in the first trimester and um I can't I can't even fathom the pain um of losing a baby later and I, I know people that this has happened to and and um it's yeah I mean I just I, there's no, no words really um but yeah I think that the the the, the we all find our way through this, but I, I, I think that there really needs to be more conversation about it. Um, and I, what surprised me about myself was, uh, it, it was the thing that I feared the most happening. And I guess just, I just discovered so much more courage and fortitude um, in myself by going through this. And I also, and this is going to sound very um, strange, the way that my body rode through the journey of losing a baby gave me so much confidence in my baby to be able to birth a baby. Um, I, I, I don't know how to, it, I just... I realized that my body was, my body knew how to do something that I was not in control of. And even though it was such a great grief that, that there, there was just so much more of them about my body than I knew about. And, um, you know, I'm saying that from a privileged place of having, and this is the trigger warning is that I have had a, I have had a child, but I did not know that I could have a child when I lost that baby and I still felt that in me that like that my body was an, a wild animal yeah that was a real it, there's a real power to the female body that I hadn't witnessed until that yeah wow that's so profound and and it, it's the, the female body is is absolutely it's, it's it's remarkable it is I'm curious Ali what was um what was the most helpful advice you received during this time in your life? Um, I mean, there many people will be listening to this and they're going through, you know, the depths of grief that you just described. Um, what would you say to someone who's like really in the thick of it right now? Ooh, I mean, first of all, I, I send you love because I think we need all the love we can get going through this and and there is nothing there's nothing too much about what you are going through it is to me it was cataclysmic and it was enormous and it was heavy and and I would cry parking the car and I'd cry and I, I couldn't get over it and like if you are feeling those things, you, there's nothing wrong with you and you're not weird. It is huge. Um, and I guess if you can let yourself feel it, really like let yourself just feel the full weight of it and let yourself be comforted by your partner and your friends. And, you know, and I I hope that you are in a situation where you, are supported and that can ask for support and receive it. Um, I don't really know. There's not really any way of, of making it better. It's just time, time, um, time helps, you know, that's really it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then like, and, and, and knowing that you're not alone. 
I think that's beautiful advice. So moving on to pregnancy, what sort of emotional mm-hmm. hurdles did you find yourself jumping over after becoming pregnant after your miscarriage? And how did you handle hope mm-hmm. with uncertainty, joy for the future versus grief of what you lost? Mm. It's hard. It's hard walking those lines because it does feel really uncertain in every step of the way. I remember like, you know, each sort of week by week, you know, just looking out for signs and you get to one place, but then you still have to have tests and you get to the next sort of milestone, but then there's still more. And, um, but I was so anxious in my first pregnancy, like so deeply anxious. And I was trying so hard to get everything right. And the worst thing, the thing that I feared the most happened. And I was told by um, an OBGYN um, at some point in my journey that like one of the worst things, because I was like, freaking out about cheese and I was freaking out about like all the millions of things that you're not supposed to eat and was my was my bath too hot and blah, blah 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 and she said um your body like stress and your body producing cortisol is actually like worse for you than if you eat a little bit of cheese or whatever you know like wrong kind of cheese stress is really not great for the baby so try and chill out and I was like yeah 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 and then my first pregnancy just didn't chill out for a second and um in my second pregnancy I just I just really like tried to lean into this like walking into the unknown and like you can't hold it too tightly because you just don't know um but I I just tried to like find happiness in little things and it's hard when like you're nauseous and you feel like crap um but yeah I tried to enjoy enjoy being pregnant and like each step of the way that I was in as opposed to like holding too much anxiety for what I couldn't control in the future yeah I mean what I think that that, that's really a a great way um, of of balancing this, Um, you know, the seat that you were in. I'm curious, what did, what is sticks out for you as the most memorable moment of pregnancy? (laughs) Oh God. Uh, I mean, I should say that like, I didn't really like, there's a lot of women that have like, glowing pregnancies on Instagram where they just look like goddesses and (laughs) you know I just felt I don't know I felt I felt enormous I had like huge swollen ankles and you know I I was tired and I was just like farty and um (laughs) snoring and stuff um but yeah, I don't know. I um, I I think of pregnancy, and I just think of like like so many trips to the bathroom at night, and just watching my body like slow, like ripening, and and my step getting heavier, and but also that that sort of growing feeling of like I'm gonna I'm gonna meet this little person soon, you know, like just not having any way to fathom that and it's so interesting having met my baby now there's just like that that bridge that like strange wonderful cosmic bridge that you cross and you look back and you go I didn't I didn't know I didn't know you yet you know um yeah such a uh, yeah interesting time and magical time like as farty and as bloated and as grumpy as I was <laughs> being in the bath and like rubbing my my stomach and 
feeling those kicks. So it's pretty special. Thank you for keeping it real. <laughs> um, I, I... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm never going to be one of those people are like, oh yeah, I was like, I bounced back in like two weeks. I had a six pack. <laughs> nope. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I, re- I appreciate that, and I know everyone listening will, um, because that, that's that's the reality. Yeah. Um, what did you do to prepare for the baby's birth? Did you have a self care routine you stuck to? Did you have a support team? Um, self care is not my specialty anyway. Um, I I listen to expectful actually quite a lot um because sleeping got harder especially as I got bigger and that was really helpful um I did um I did uh belly dancing um for for baby yeah which is it was um it's it's brilliant like there's this woman I think her name is Maha Muse I think is how you say it and she's um she's got like belly dancing dance for the womb and um as I was doing lots of like hip circles and stuff which got funnier and funnier the larger I got um but that was really great for keeping uh keeping things moving like lots of circular movements um I uh I did Pilates um uh did Pilates every morning at a certain point because I got PG I'm so tired. I almost just called it PG tips, which is a kind of T. But it's not. It's called a pelvic <laughs> pelvic girdle pain, PGP. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, doing doing Pilates and like working on deep core was really helpful, um, so that I could walk. Um, baths, baths were were really nice. Um, I really enjoyed like rubbing oil on my belly. That was also nice. That sounds like a beautiful routine, and I'm I really want to check out this um, belly dancer. <laughs> That's thank you for sharing that. It's great. I got I actually was was filming um, filming the third Fantastic Beasts the entirety of my of my pregnancy, and um, and I was doing belly dancing in the sort of the the, the backstage tents, and then like people were walking by and. They would just come in and start doing it with me. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, it was wow. Good. Wow. I, I <laughs> wish I saw that. So um, we all plan for a particular type of childbirth, or, or at least many of us do. Um, but inevitably, you mm-hmm. know, something something unexpected happens. I'm curious, did, did something unexpected happen for you in childbirth? And if so, what was that one thing for you? Yeah, I mean, childbirth is, is just like everything with, um, with pregnancy, with getting pregnant throughout pregnancy. And then afterwards is like, there's some things you can control and there's a whole lot that you just can't. Um, and there's like luck and it's, I feel like really educating yourself ahead of time is good because you don't want to be trying to work out what, um, what things mean when you're in labor, because labor is crazy. Um, I I actually had a false alarm labor where I, because they, they say that when your water breaks, that it's, it can be a trickle. And so I had, I had what I thought was my water breaking. Um, and I really didn't want to go into the hospital ahead of time. because I wasn't having any contractions and I didn't want to be induced. And, and so I was like trying to sort of force my body into contractions, which you, you can't, I mean, you can't do unless you're like actually being induced. That's what in, induction is. But, um, everything, my mind was running away with itself and I was getting really weird and pushing my partner away and being very strange. And then finally agreed to go into the hospital as it was getting closer and closer to the time where I might have to be induced. And then she checked me and she was like, you're not, your waters are not broken. Uh, you can go home. And so then went home and, and I had been so frustrated with being so pregnant. I was late 
or after my due date, which I think the due dates are, it's really tough because obviously we want to have like an end game, but so many, like most people are late. So then you're like thinking you're late, but actually you're not really late. You're just on time for your baby. But I, yeah, I had been just like, ah, oh, just want to just, just want to get this baby out now. And, and my frustration had led to so much impatience. And I was just, I st- took a step back after this really weird day. Also the waiting room was horrible. Everything was horrible about that day and just went, I've gotten a second chance. Um, the birth doesn't have to be like this. I'm just going to chill out because this baby's going to come. So like just trust jeez I mean I, like when I was like 40 weeks four days pregnant I, I started to say my partner I don't even feel like I'm pregnant anymore maybe there's not even a baby in there maybe I'm just fat <laughs> I, just, I just didn't trust that I was gonna have a child um and uh so when my when when I actually went into labor I like prior to that I did like this like Capricorn full moon dance ritual and like I had we had dinner outside it was just like really lovely and then the following morning I went into labor and just through a series of lucky things was very connected to my partner went into the hospital when I was just enough dilated they admitted us to the birthing center because I happened to meet the criteria I happened to get into there I happened to get the birth that I had dreamed about um because we were very lucky and we were very lucky with our midwife and um and I have to say in England the NHS is brilliant and took really incredible care of us and um yeah I mean I had I had a a really dreamy birth It, it birth is crazy um it's crazy. It's the most wild experience <laughs> I've ever No, I mean it's just there's like nothing like it. But um yeah, it was a very, very profoundly um yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Oh thank you for sharing that. I love that. And I'm so happy that you had that beautiful experience. That's incredible. It's lucky. It's very lucky. Yeah. I mean, not everyone gets that. So, I mean, I think acknowledging that you were, you were lucky and, you know, it's really amazing that you, that you have that experience. After your, your, your birth, um, you wrote on Instagram that birthing your child was the most important event of your life and that you haven't known like how, what to say that could possibly capture that experience have you have you been able to think about the words to describe that the the birth um in in the time that has passed yeah i mean it's i think every woman has their own completely unique experience um around birth to the point where i feel kind of like mine 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 to give mine words sort of feels like I don't know it's just it's not going to be uh relatable I think because it's my my experience of birth but I guess a parenthood <laughs> early parenthood man it's crazy it's incredible and and like joyous and and electric especially those those first couple of months where you're just you're just in awe and like staring at your child and bursting into tears and it's like so wonderful and it's like shell shock too um going into a 24-hour clock is crazy and and it it's like you know even if your birth goes like as smoothly as possible you still feel kind of like you've been hit by a bus and then you've suddenly been like entrusted with this tiny person that you're supposed to keep alive with your body and um yeah, it's wild. It's it's wild. Wild is maybe like, <laughs> like the number one word. Just whoa. Um, I think that that uh, for me, I was very lucky. Like it, 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 my partner and I were so knitted together by this experience, and he has been extraordinary. And 
um and you know you just be, you become a family like you go from being a couple to a family it's huge and funny and funny there's so many weird funny moments and like babies and they they speak of gassy man like like the 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 noise emissions from a a tiny baby are shocking (laughs) and their faces and they do such funny things you're like what is going through your head right now it's amazing fascinating (laughs) what were those first few days um like in becoming a mother i mean women i think there's some women that experience this pure enlightenment um you know, others that are just in straight up survival mode. Um, he's, some go into depression. Um, where were you on that spectrum in, you know, the first couple of days after, after you became a mom? I was very happy. Um, kind of happiness I'd never really experienced before. Um, I was very, I felt like I had no skin at all. And everything, I just like, light was intense. And I just wanted to really cocoon. I didn't leave um, the bed for once we, once we got back home, which was thankfully like the same day. Um, Just, just hunkered down really. I just felt, um, so cracked open um by by the experience and so everything just was really I just really had to who just like yeah just keep the world at bay and I and I had a sense that I was going to feel that way from all the things that I read and knowing myself so um we had kind of created an environment where I, I felt I could do that um just just like get to know this little person and and recover Uh, but I was amazed at how quickly my body bounced (laughs) I say bounce back I mean you know not it it just repaired I was I was really amazed at the at the repair even though yeah just coming from where where I started where like you know your insides just feel like mashed potatoes it's really a weird sensation to like to building up stomach muscles again because you have you're holding a sleeping baby and you need to move and like you know just all these like just I just felt my body going like oh okay gotta get strong um which is really cool yeah no it is that is it's it's the body is incredible did you face any unexpected challenges in the early days like Mm. I mean it's probably a no-brainer but but maybe it's not it was was sleep harder to come by than you anticipated or like feeding did everything you know go according to to plan Mm -hmm. for you in those early days oh yeah no sleep sleep is tough um getting nap naps were tough um breastfeeding has been easier for me than than I think than 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 a lot of women have it but it still has been incredibly complicated and like engorgement and mastitis and you know it's just like it's not it's not straightforward and um I really suggest um asking for help um and also uh, my my partner had learned from his friends that you know sometimes it's easier for your partner to kind of see with a latch like um, than, than it is for you, especially because when your milk first comes in, you're like, can't, you're like boob, boob mountains. Like they're so, they're so crazy. There's like tiny baby trying to get on there. And it just seems like hilarious that nature's doing that. Cause I don't know. It's a two person job. I feel like at the beginning. Um, uh, yeah. But I also had like really crippling, uh, crippling social anxiety, um, as well after, for like quite a while afterwards I still I'm still struggling with it a bit but I kind of am getting more on top of it but that that's been really really a weird I I 
I'm already like a slightly anxious person, but I, th- I thought I had gotten kind of past it, but it's been nuts. Can you, would you mind telling us more about that? Because I think that's something that a lot of people experience and might, they might not know, you know, why they're experiencing or, or even what's going on. Like, how does the social anxiety appear for you? Well, I mean, for, for me, uh, it's a combination of like, okay, so there's COVID, right? So like we've, our, our ways of relating to other people have been really damaged because you just constantly, or at least I was, especially because I, I, I didn't get vaccinated. I wasn't eligible to get vaccinated until the very, very end of my pregnancy. So I opted to get it, get vaccinated um, afterwards because it was too close to birth for me. But um, like, you know, you just, just counting how long someone is breathing near you. That's what I was doing in terms of like, okay, I've got 15 minutes before I, you know, I'm going to get 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 COVID but then then also you know just not used to being around people in the same way there's that but also I just felt like my identity got smashed when I became a mom and then um and then I didn't know I I kind of I was doing the day-to-day acts of being a mother and being a mother felt very real but then me as a anything else just felt very very porous and 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 flimsy and like I didn't know who I didn't know who I was anymore as a woman as and as a person ordering coffee I didn't know how to make chit chat I just didn't it was a really it's hard to describe but I just didn't know who I was anymore um old things old stories didn't apply old Identi- identifiers didn't apply and so then you know I'd be like they have this these like groups here where like you can meet other people who have um like a due date that's near you and um they live in your area and they're the people that you haven't met up with and I've met one of my one of my dearest friends through that but like I would go and I would sit with other moms and I barely be able to like stay at the table because I just felt uh, like I was gonna cry or I could I couldn't I I just didn't know how to be it was really weird and I felt really self-conscious about it and so I just sort of didn't socialize um yeah I don't really know what has helped maybe time I went back to the states and I saw my family and my really old friends and I think that gave me that boosted me up a bit and now I'm kind of a bit better but yeah it lasted a long time wow wow thank you for sharing that I know I know that that's something that others are going through no I hope I hope I hope not (laughs) it sucks (laughs) but yeah I hope not either, but I, I, I hear yeah. it, and um, it's. I think that's why we're speaking, yeah. is, you know, to highlight what people are going through mm. and normalize it. Um, yeah. It's really important, so I think, you know, you you being comfortable and sharing that is really important. Thank you. Well, I, ho- I hope if you are out there and you're listening and you're going through that, know that you're definitely not alone, and it really is as, as a garbage feeling. <laughs> But but it, like speaking from experience, at least it had it is getting better for me, and I hope that you can get the support. I just was very I was very open about it. I think that like that's the thing is like just saying it has has a lot of power. Um, it takes away the power from the anxiety and gives it back to you. Going like wow, I'm feeling really like uncomfortable being around people, really raw, and then it's yours as opposed to just the unrelenting anxiety. That is great advice. Um, Allie, so this is our last question, um, but feel free to add anything else that you'd like to share. What does your self-care routine look like now? And I know you said you, you didn't do a great job of taking care of yourself before baby, but um, <laughs> how has it shifted with a baby? Because you've even less time to take care of yourself. And is there anything that you hope to reincorporate into your daily routine it's so it's so interesting it it is the thing that gets sort of squeezed out of the day when you know you're like 
you've got so much to do and sort of no time to do anything and then doing an like acts of self care can seem really um like the first things that can just get bumped but uh, I find that I'm a better mom, a better partner, just a gentler person to be around. If I just take a minute to do something nice, it doesn't have to be, you know, like extravagant, but taking a shower and then putting a nice lotion on afterwards and like taking a minute with my body um sometimes just that it's like it's not really the taking that much time but it's taking a breath in between sort of practical things to notice where you're at um and yeah it's just it's the space between in general, I feel like is the most self-care. Exercise also, um, I find to be really hard to get in there, but it really does make me feel better. Um, and I'm I'm currently dealing with some like medical issues, um, autoimmune issues and things. I'm like, I'm really supposed to build up strength. Um, so, uh, I've been told to like use <laughs> use my baby as a as as weight. <laughs> so like I do I do press ups and squats with the baby, and uh, you know just like even like taking self care while I'm whilst I'm parenting is good. But yeah, um, reading reading while nursing. So for me, I love reading. So like to just have a good book that has nothing to do with self improvement or but just a juicy good book that's that that's a real like it's a real luxurious feeling um and yeah that can be done whilst nursing that sounds luxurious because on someone who is a toddler those that's something that doesn't last for very long so um when oh god yeah <laughs> Yep. Yeah, reading a book, I'm sure you're just like, what is that? What is? <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm. It's gonna go. <laughs> it's already, it's already going. I can see it. Yeah. Like, don't eat the iPhone cable. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it's a transition, it's, yeah. but um. Holly, this was a, a lovely conversation. I mean, I feel like we've gone through you know, just so many emotions in the last hour. And um, I know that people, whatever stage they're in, are going to benefit tremendously for this conversation. So thank you for your vulnerability and realness um, and just and sharing your, your story with us. It's my pleasure. And I, I feel such a tremendous respect and love for women on absolutely every step of this journey I feel like it's such it if you if you are open to it it can be such a tremendously healing and powerful journey and there is a whole universe of women who have also gone on this journey and um you know I think we need to we need to support each other because it's 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 big it's big it's a it's a big responsibility in in there are big sacrifices um there are big big fears to face and I think the more we can open the doors to our innermost hearts to each other and 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 support each other through that the better mothers will be able to be and we really need all the help that we can get preparing our kids for the world that they're going to inherit, um, you know. And so that means taking care of us and taking care of each other first. It does, absolutely. Well, thank you for for doing um, 
for doing the part and in, in sharing and um, opening the conversation. I'm thrilled. Thank you for creating the space to do so.